Hey guys, open Dragon Mouth number 35. Uh, first off, uh, I did post my review of the Good Dinosaur. If you haven't checked it out yet, um, yeah, go ahead and um, yeah, give it a look. Of course, there are spoilers in there. But, um, but yeah, it just wasn't up to um, the standards I was expecting from Pixar. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. Now this I wanted to bring up to you guys because this is somewhat furry related. Uh, I didn't know about this until a few days ago. This has been going on for the whole month of November. There's one particular channel called I Hate Everything. Or I-H-E for short. It's, it's growing in popularity. Right now it has uh, just under a quarter million uh, subscribers. But recently he done... A, um, a segment which uh, he calls the search for the worst where he looks at the uh, some of the worst movies and see which one is the absolute worst uh, which uh, right now is garbage pale kids but um, he recently reviewed this movie that came out this year uh, it's called cool cat saves the kids it's basically an educational film uh, with a cat uh, suit. It, it's an orange cat. And it's basically an educational film about um, bullying. Yeah, and I took a look at the review, and uh, the movie looks bad. I mean, for, I mean, here's, here's one of the things that it, it does uh, near the beginning of the film. Uh, the kid gets uh, a text... Um, which she doesn't know where the number comes from. And what does Cool Cat suggest? Open it up and read it! <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to teach your kids. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it's just um, some kid who's, who's making it clear that he's proud to be a bully and and uh, just tells, tells her that she's ugly, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, in short, it's it's a confused film, and uh, I can tell you the writing is bad, and some of the acting is, I have to say, funny. Um, but but uh, but yeah, he pretty much criticizes the film, but but uh, suggests that you give it give it a watch just because of how weird it is. But not too long after, the the producer of the film and of Cool Cat, uh, his name is uh, Derek Savage, filed a copyright claim against him. Despite the fact that that one, this is a, somewhat of a parody, and two, it's a commentary which is protected under fair use. I mean, he goes as far as to email uh, the the person himself in threatening. Uh, to to sue him and says that that he has an attorney. Of course, of course, um, the the person um, uh, of uh, I hate everything, which I think his name is Alex, if I'm right. I mean, I just subscribed to the channel as well, but 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 yeah, he he got a lot a lot of support um, as far as this issue and. It pretty much backs up uh, what he believes about the YouTube uh, copyright system, that it's broken. He, he made a few videos over this uh, uh, defending himself as to as to why he's in the right, which I do support him. Because um, there's reviews all over the place. And, and he tried to keep this as civil as possible, and not too long ago, uh, his review did come back up, so do take a look at it. But uh, he also revealed some of the messages that he was sent. And the guy who makes Cool Cat to educate kids starts swearing at him, using the F word, uh, pretty much, just pretty much bashing him. So I guess sum him up in one word. Hypocrite. So, 
I guess, yeah, a guy who's trying to teach kids about cyberbullying is now bullying this guy just because he gave a, gave him a bad review. And he also looked further into this. He had noticed that one of the claims that, that he made was uh, that uh, that this attorney worked with another uh, producer, I think it was uh, one of the uh, Jurassic uh, movies. Uh, Alex had emailed this particular producer that he claimed. And the producer wrote back and says, I don't know the guy. So it seems that Derek may be faking uh, this this attorney. Not to mention that the so-called um, attorney that um, that he that he tried to pose as doesn't exist. Um, but yeah, I want you um, to check him out. Uh, I hate everything. Even did a video on furries. Um, don't uh, don't go in bashing him because. That's pretty much his persona on, on this channel. He hates everything. So, And uh, he even did two videos responding to comments. And um, some of them from furries. And they're embarrassing. They're really embarrassing to watch. So, um, some of them either just didn't listen or just didn't watch the video at all. And uh, hit... Pretty much his, his tone was, he doesn't care. <laughs> but uh, but do give him a watch, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. And speaking of um, bullying, today I got this voicemail, and it is just precious. I, uh, it was a, a someone from California, which I don't know anyone from, um, at least on a personal level, from California. So I did not answer the um, the phone call, but he left a voicemail, and <laughs> I just had a laugh at this. Um, I got this uh, on speakerphone. Uh, just listen to this. To at hand, it is extremely time sensitive. My name is Justin William, and I'm my teaching is. Well, that was, I mean, this guy was, you do have a precious little voice, don't you? Oh, yes, you do. This guy's a scammer. I took the liberty of looking up his phone number, and people were listing uh, uh, messages that he's a, he is an IRS scammer. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried about that, but I just found it funny. Um. Which is why I don't answer solicited calls. So, so yeah, just another lesson for you guys. Uh, also, Midwest Fur Fest uh, coming up this weekend, and of course I will be there. I will be arriving on Thursday. I'm expected to arrive at the hotel at around 9 a.m. My flight arrives at around 7.40. And... Yeah, I'm. So yes, uh, yeah, I got to give you some information on that. Uh, of course, pre-reg is closed. Now, the cost for a regular membership will be fifty-five dollars at the door. Sponsors will be one twenty-five, and shiny sponsorship will be two fifty. The daily prices, uh, Friday. $25, Saturday is $30, and Sunday is $25. Uh, for minors, for the full weekend is $25. Friday or Sunday will be $10, and Saturday itself will be $15. Anyone six or younger and an attending parent is free. Uh, of course, our hotel is uh, 
always the uh, Hyatt Regency O'Hare. And all of the rooms are sold out. Yeah, I had... Uh, I've mentioned this in a previous video. I had a tough time looking for a room, but I did manage to find one. Um, yeah, if you haven't found one yet, either uh, check out the uh, Midwest for Fest Facebook uh, page. There's people that make a listing there. Or go to conroomies.com. Uh, It'll give you the listings of anyone who, who posts a, an empty spot in a room. Now, I, I should mention, uh, if you are flying into Chicago, uh, you'll be arriving in one or two airports, depending on which airline you're using. If you're going to arrive in O'Hare, there's going to be a shuttle that will uh, take you directly to the hotel. If you're going to be arriving at Midway, now it's going to be a little bit more complex, but there, there is a way that I do it. You, know, you go there by train. It'll take about 45 minutes to get there. You, you'll t first take the... Um, the orange line, uh, which takes you from Midway, uh, it'll take you into downtown Chicago. And you'll be um, getting off at the uh, Clark slash Lake uh, station, and then you'll transfer to the blue line. Uh, from there, you know, you'll be uh, going to the Rosemont station, and then it'll be about a, a quarter mile walk to the hotel and uh, it's very cheap and uh, fare to the Hyatt is uh, two dollars twenty five cents and uh, maybe the same thing uh, if you're returning by train so yeah that's pretty much what I recommend doing because uh, taking taxi is expensive nowadays in Chicago uh, programming, uh, what is on the schedule? Oh, uh, where did you guys put it? There it is. Uh, Thursday, registration uh, for pre-registration. Uh, pickup for sponsors and shiny sponsors will be 4.30, and regular um, pre-registration is at 5. If you're going at the door, it will be at 6 o'clock. And we have Bring Your Own Games. And this will be in the O'Hare Ballroom from 7 to midnight. Uh, let's see. And then we do have a Thursday night dance. Um, they're listing uh, the DJs for, for this night. 9 o'clock um, DJ Spots. At 10 o'clock will be um, Camelix, and 11 will be uh, Magic Ruined. And let's see, Friday. Registration will open at 10 for everyone. Opening ceremonies will be at 11. This will take place in the Grand Ballroom. Uh, let's see, if this is your first furry convention, I recommend going to that. It's at 1 o'clock in the Grand Ballroom. Uh, let's see. Art show and dealer stand will also open at one, and uh, they will be in the international level, which is the uh, the bottom floor. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I guess of honor will be um, doing a panel at two o'clock. This will occur in uh, the grand ballroom. Uh, let's see, if you're going to be in the variety show, the first rehearsal will be at 3.30 in the Grand Ballroom. Uh, let's see, what else do we get? If you're doing a poker tournament, it'll be at 5 o'clock, and this will be in uh, the Lindbergh Room. And... Um, Six o'clock, uh, we're doing uh, a bit of MST3K, and this will be uh, furry style, by the way. It'll be in the um, LAX room. And uh, by the way, if you, if you haven't uh, found out already, MST3K is coming back. Um, as of right now, uh, they're working to try to get a full 12 episodes, and uh, they have announced a new cast member. So uh, do, do look at that up. They have their own website. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? 
if you're doing dance competition, the preliminaries will be at 7 o'clock and being held in Rosemont. We also have the Friday dance at 10 o'clock. Your DJs will be at 10 o'clock, Vinny. 11 o'clock, uh, Kihu. 12 o'clock, uh, the less than, greater than sign. That's what it says there. And 1 o'clock is Dante. Uh, let's see. Saturday. The first... Um, I'm sorry, the second um, Variety Show rehearsal will be at 9 o'clock in the Grand Ballroom. Uh, as always, Dealer's Den, Registration Out, or Tally, they'll open at 10 o'clock. And the Poker Tournament will continue at Lindbergh at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you're at a uh, sponsor level, there will be a brunch at Rosemont. And that will occur at 10.30. For those uh, doing first suit parade, uh, the staging will be at one o'clock, and it will start. If I can scroll this down, they put so much on this listing here. They'll be in the grand ballroom, and the first suit parade will start at one thirty. There should be a parade route inside of the, um, the programming guide. Yeah, they they usually do that every year. Now, I know how much everyone loves Telephone, the um, Angel Dragon. Well, they're going to uh, do a panel interviewing Telephone, and that will be at Hartsfield in, um, at 3 o'clock. Let's see what else we got. Which, uh, by the way, uh, the Angel Dragon's meet uh, will be uh, an, an hour later, right after that. Uh, is it going to be in the same place? Yes, it is. Okay, what else do we got? Uh, variety show will start at 6.30. Of course, it'll be in the Grand Ballroom. And uh, if you love the uh, Dragon Show, they're going to do a live show at 7 o'clock in SeaTac. Uh, uh, featuring Alkaline, of course, my, my good friend Xander. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? And uh, they'll be doing Three-Headed Monster. Which is a uh, stand-up comedy show featuring Alkali, Pandez, and Xander. It's same thing at SeaTac. Uh, Floor Wars, uh, here it's a popular one. It's at 8 o'clock at Rosemont. Uh, let's see. What is this? Uh, Amadea Charity Concert. Uh, I may have butchered the name there. That will be at 9 o'clock and will take place. Yeah, man, why do they put so much information in that box there? It's in the Grand Ballroom. And 10 o'clock, my favorite panel. Whose line is it anyway? It will be at Rosemont at 10 o'clock. Uh, at the same time, Saturday dance and the DJs at 10 will be Audi. At 11 o'clock will be Tech Fox. At midnight will be Rekka, and 1 o'clock will be uh, Darrow. On Sunday, poker tournament uh, continues at 10 o'clock, and I believe it's the same place, which would be... Uh, oh, no, that's going to be at... Um, oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong one there. There we go. It's, it's going to be Lindbergh. That's what I thought. And, of course, everything else opens up same time at 10 o'clock. Uh, what else do we got? Charity Auction will be at 11.30, and that will be a Rosemont. And this one I'm interested in. Furry TV commercials will be in the Tech Center at 1 o'clock. Percy Dance Competition at 1 o'clock, and will take place... Uh, man, it's going outside the... Maybe if I can... Yeah. Yeah, I got this special little thing that I can scroll using both my fingers. It'll be in Grand Ballroom. Let's see. And Fursuit Games, uh, 3 o'clock, which will take place. I wish this thing would... Because the, the box is is cutting off at the bottom, and if I move away from it, I it'll go away. So 
It'll take place at Rosemont, and closing ceremonies will be at 5 o'clock in the Grand Ballroom. And Dead Dog Dance will be at 10 o'clock, with the DJs uh, will be at 9 o'clock. Oh, no, wait a minute. It says that the dance will be start at 10 o'clock, yet there's a DJ scheduled for 9 o'clock. Uh, I'm not sure that that's an error or what. But it has Deke at 9, Stripe at 10, and Storm at 11. So, yeah, it may be a little typo there. We'll, uh, we'll see. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much what uh, the uh, schedule is looking like. But if you want to look at the whole schedule, you can go to furfest.org, uh, which will give you the link to um, to the schedule. The guests of honor, we have three of them this year. Uh, first is um, Ifus, uh, who is a freelance uh, artist in central Illinois uh, with her husband and uh, bearded, bearded dragon. She graduated from the College for Creative Studies in Detroit, Michigan, with a bachelor's degree in illustration and a minor in animation. Uh, and her work experience includes creating artwork for the fandom for over eight years, as well as doing professional artwork outside the fandom for her games and packaging. Uh, our second guest of honor will be Mark Markale. Yeah, all these weird names. Um, he has been drawing as... Or she has been drawing since she was very young, but her inspiration for drawing, talking animals uh, didn't really peak until 1994 uh, when The Lion King had hit theaters. And she spent most of her time um, drawing and found an online community some years later, which would help her uh, find uh, the furry fandom. Uh, her uh, passion um, uh, got her um, a BFA in illustration from... Ringling School of Art and Design in 2007. And, uh, by the way, she didn't go to conventions until after college. And our third uh, guest of honor will be uh, Yonoa, um, also known as Robert Christensen, uh, who is a, a full-time fursuit maker and the owner of the Fuzz Factory. And he has been a furry since 1996, back when he first logged into Furcadia. But it wasn't until 2011 when he became active in the furry fandom. It was, it was while working as a college professor in theater that he began making fursuits as a hobby. But uh, it wasn't until creating his first character, uh, D-Bag Dog, uh, that he found a passion for performance in a fursuit. Now, if anyone's um, as a uh, fursuit uh, from Fuzz Factory, this is the guy to help you out. All right, and finally, the charity for this year is going to be uh, Save a Vet. Uh, this is a charity from Lindenhurst, Illinois, and helps rescue military and law enforcement working dogs and other service animals from being put down when their service to country and community is done and to provide housing and relief for disabled veterans who help take care of them. Uh, they successfully pursue their goals through a comprehensive four-point program of awareness, advocacy, adoption, and rescue. You can check them out at saveitvet.org. All right, so that's pretty much uh, all the information I have for you at this time. If you want even more information, like I said, go to furfast.org. It'll give you all the information you need. And by the way, the theme, there is none. Uh, they're going back to um, the roots uh, from the first year where they had no theme at all. So pretty much a blank slate, whatever you want to be. Okay, and um, December already? Man, the year just went by very fast. But we only had three events uh, this uh, this month. And all of them in America. Uh, of course, Midwest Fur Fest this weekend. And the other two are going to be a New Year's Eve Con and New Year's Furry Ball uh, in Illinois and Delaware, respectively, on, of course, New Year's Eve. And so that's pretty much it for um, 2015. 
So we're going to be looking forward, but, um, but yeah, I will be, we'll be arriving in Chicago at around, um, well, actually the hotel at around 9 a.m. and I'll be departing, um, Monday, um, in the early afternoon. Uh, and of course, uh, I also want to, uh, mention this, um, yeah, after what happened last year, of course, uh, I was there when the when the chlorine uh, incident happened. Now, now I would expect security to, to step up this year. Now, if you see anything suspicious, anything that seems out of the ordinary, don't be afraid to speak up. Uh, talk to a staff member or security or whatever. Uh, they'll look at it and... And uh, we're going to make sure that everyone is safe this year. So that's pretty much it. This dragon's mouth is now closing.